morning. Welcome to worship. It is so good to be together. Let us begin with our call to worship. He is risen. Christ, Christ is, is alive. alive. God meets us where we are. With, with compassion, compassion and, and grace, God, God welcomes, welcomes us home. home. Build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell our fathers to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build the house where prophets speak and words are strong and true, where all God's children dare to seek. shall stand as witness and as symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Where the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ, the peace that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone. To heal and strengthen, serve and teach, and live the word we know. In the outcast and the stranger, bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger, all are welcome. confess our sins before God and one another. Forgiving God, we, we spend, spend so, so much, much of our time doubting you, 
doubting ourselves, failing to place our trust in you. Our lack of faith causes us to stumble, and when we fall, we fall far. Forgive us our sin and lift us so that we can rise to the challenge of carrying out your mission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is merciful and just. God offers forgiveness for all who ask it. Dear friends, receive now the entire forgiveness of all your sins and walk with the power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. God of all wisdom, Paul, Paul knew how, how to sit, sit with people in their, their own reality before bringing them along the journey of the, of the story of Christ. Christ. Teach us to honor people's journeys with grace and respect. Amen. Hello, kids. I hope you're having a great day wherever you're at. We're going to continue talking about our friend Paul today. You know, we met him a few weeks back, didn't we? And we've seen a lot of things happen to Paul, changes and all of that. But Paul was very good at sharing Jesus with people who had never heard of him. And today's lesson, we're going to have Paul talk about Jesus in a place that people came to talk about a lot of different things. Um, he is there being asked, what is this new thing you're talking about, this new belief? And so Paul begins to explain to them what it means. And it got me thinking, what do you do uh, when you're going to tell somebody about Jesus. Now, sometimes I think our, our tongues get tied up when we talk about Jesus. We, we don't want to say something that, that could be wrong. We don't want to say something that's going to get somebody upset. So, so how do we share Jesus? You know, it makes me think of that song that you all like to sing so much. It's a, it's a song that your parents and your grandparents sang, too. It's a song that that helps us remember what Jesus is about. Jesus loves me, right? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but God is strong. Kids, that's how simple it is, really, to share about Jesus. Always remembering the key. Jesus loves you. Maybe that's how we share Jesus. We tell others, Jesus loves you. And we go and we find them where they're at. And we show them what it means to love as Jesus loves. You know, Jesus loves you even when you've made mistakes, right? That means when somebody makes a mistake. We don't want to make fun of them or put them down. We want to remind them that even though they've made a mistake, Jesus loves them. Really, that's what Paul does today in our lesson. He goes to where the people are. He meets them where they're at and brings along with him Jesus. And that is what's going to make a big impact on them, that Paul goes to them. And because of that, Jesus is there too. And hearts are changed. This week, think about a way in which you can bring Jesus with you. Bring Jesus' love with you in what you do. And if you get the opportunity, come alongside somebody and remind them that Jesus loves you. You all have a great week. We'll see you soon. Our secondary text is from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. And our preaching text for this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 17. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, 
he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also, some Epicureans and Stoic philosophers debated him, debated with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of a foreign divinity. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Areopagus and asked him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there were there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Oropagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needs anything, since he himself gives all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the, and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and to perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each, of, each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, or even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and the imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Hello, friends in Christ, grace and peace to you. God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, Paul's come a long way, hasn't he? And Paul's witness is an important witness, but Paul's witness is important, I think, because of who he goes to. You see, Paul will spend some time in the synagogues, like we heard here in our text, but for the most part, Paul's ministry is going out to the people, not just a certain kind, but all kinds of people. Paul brings this good news. And in today's account, we have Paul standing there in a place in which debates were often held. But before he gets to that center stage, I want us to take note of what happens when he is in Athens. He goes to Athens to proclaim the good news of Jesus. And what does he encounter? Resistance. Resistance, not from the Athenians, really, not, not from those who were everyday people. He gets resistance from those in, of the synagogue. I mean, it says here that it's not even a discussion that he has with them. They get into arguments. You know, we've had this sense of hostility, haven't we? This thread of hostility that runs through those of authority in the synagogues and the temples. They don't want to hear what Paul and Peter and the other disciples are talking about when it comes to Jesus. And so they begin to argue. They, they begin to belittle them. But you see, Paul comes from them, and that makes it very, very hard to discredit him. I like the way this account goes. It's, it's almost as if people overhear Paul talking and they want to know more. 
when I looked at this text uh, for, for this week, one of the things that jumped out that I hadn't thought about before was the acknowledgement of how spiritual the people were in Athens. It makes me think about what we have today. While we often hear of the decline in church attendance, one thing hasn't changed, and that is there still is a deep spirituality with people. There's a hunger, if you will, with people. They want to know that there's something more out there. They want to know that there's something bigger than themselves, something that they can honor and worship. But for whatever reason, what they've experienced with church has turned them away from church, but not their spiritual hunger. I think this text is a wonderful text for us to spend some time with as we think about what it means to be the church in 2022, taking this account from so long ago and hearing what Paul says and what Paul does when he's brought to the Oropagus, that place in which they debate politics and they debate religion. And I got to believe it was a time in which we would be looking at it somewhat strange because this whole idea of Fair debate doesn't seem to be anything that happens today, right? But that's what they did. People would go out and watch this. And they were eager to hear and to learn. And it wasn't a question of one out shouting the other. It was a question of who could make the best statement. Who could be the most convincing and win the debate? I think today we get more into arguments than we do debates. And that's too bad. But that's where Paul is. Paul's at this place, and today is the day to talk about religion. Today is the day to talk about spirituality. Whatever it is that Paul has been saying, it has perked up the ears of the people, and they want to hear more. And I love how Paul begins. Paul begins by meeting them where they're at. He talks about him walking around the city. Now remember, early on, Paul's distressed by what he's seeing. There's a lot of idol worship going on in Athens. But he doesn't attack them on that, does he? He doesn't say to them, you are foolish people. You are believing in false gods. He doesn't do any of that. He doesn't go on the attack. Instead, he remembers one of the altars that he passed. The altar to an unknown God. And they have it. Now he's got his opening. He's not going to come with this message, this new message right away. Instead, what he's going to do is he's going to answer the inscription. He's going to explain who the unknown God is meeting the people of Athens where they're at. All of a sudden, this unfamiliar teaching has a familiar connection. And you can almost get the sense, can't you? In that Oropagus, in that big gather, gathering space, as soon as he makes that connection, everybody leans in. And they want to hear more. And Paul describes what the unknown God is all about. Now, there's some things about that unknown God that, I, that had to be just completely mind-blowing for them back then. And it's things that I think sometimes Christians today forget. The most important one is that this unknown God is not, an un, is not a God who demands that we serve. No, Paul explains that this unknown God is the one who serves. He serves from a position of generosity. He serves from a position of love and compassion and forgiveness. He doesn't require service. I've said this repeatedly over time, over several sermons, that 
While God maybe doesn't require service, Martin Luther understood that it's impossible for somebody of faith to not want to serve, not want to do. You notice how God calls us to serve, right? I think this was Paul's point. The other gods required service to the God. God requires you and me to serve each other care for each other. And I think sometimes today Christians forget about that. I think sometimes we think we are in service to God. And when we get that mindset, I think it's hard then for that Christian witness to be the witness that Paul is talking about and that witness that Jesus taught about. A witness that is thinking about others, and doing for others. I can only imagine what it was like to be in that moment, to hear this revelation of a God that serves and calls us not to serve him, but one another. It was the thing that made the early church so unique, was how they cared for, how they loved, how they served one another. This opened the eyes and hearts of so many in Athens when Paul spoke. And like I said, I see so many similarities from this to what we have today. So let me challenge you with this. Maybe what we have today is a problem of communication. Maybe what we face today in the church is a problem of not understanding what it is that we're supposed to be communicating about. We expect people to come and to serve God and to worship God, to do all this to God. But reality is God calls us to serve each other. The worshiping, that experience, that worshiping experience we have with, with each other and with God is a wonderful thing. But ultimately, the worship isn't what God wants solely from us. God wants us to serve. Maybe the way we can start to change the perception of the church today is if we get back to doing what Paul taught in Athens. That a God who serves sends us out to serve. We are sent by God to serve one another. To come alongside each other. To not see each other with fearful eyes. But instead to see each other with hope, with love and compassion. Those who have been turned off by church need to recognize that the church is about caring for them. Church comes to serve them. The church doesn't ask them to serve her. Maybe if that's what we can be about, maybe if that's the witness we show, more and more people will again find their spiritual solid ground in God. I fear that if we don't start thinking that way, have a lot of empty churches with a lot of altars that will have the inscription, an altar to an unknown God. We can be about that change. We can be about that assurance. And friends, it doesn't require a lot from us. Just doing what God has always asked of us. May you serve one another this week. May you love this week, and may you bring God to the people, wherever they may be. Amen.
confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Your servant, Paul, is a model for approaching the other and sharing the gospel in the spirit of generosity and openness. May we follow his lead and respectfully accompany those whom we serve, rather than preaching without listening or insisting that others agree with us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We too are your offspring, O Lord, created in your very image to give glory to you. Forgive us when we try to recreate you in an image of our own choosing for reasons which do not honor you and return us to our true identity as your children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. When assumptions and self-righteousness are released, healing can begin. Free us of all that holds us prisoners without our realizing it and make us agents of your renewal. Bless today those whom we bring before you, especially those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, those who are experiencing difficult or stressful times, medical tests, treatments, surgeries, those who are homeless or ho homebound or hospitalized, those who are lonely, those who are grieving, and those cares and needs we lay before you now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are a motley and diverse group, your saints. Thank you for making us different from one another, yet united in your love and redeemed by your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We, are, we have indeed received grace upon grace from you, loving God. Accept these, our prayers, and use them to transform our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, I have first taste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Have a wonderful week, dear friends. And remember that you are the church wherever you may be.